I don't mean to be so bold, but you know sometimes when you get to sing the blues, it gets kind of good to you. You get so damn good to me till I have to preach it. All right. How's it going, everybody? Welcome back to Blues Guy Vinyl. Thank you very much for tuning in, joining me here today. Uh, this video is going to be five from my collection that might surprise you. Five artists or bands that I rarely show, if at all, uh, that are not blues-related musicians or artists or bands at all. Uh, obviously, the channel name, Blues Guy Vinyl, I, I lean very heavily towards blues, but I like rock, you know, classic rock, uh, hard rock, some metal, uh, some punk, just like a lot of us. You know, we have a very wide range of tastes. We, yeah, we may zero in on certain artists or certain genres that we prefer over others, but most of us have a pretty wide spectrum of music that we really enjoy. You know, I, I like soul and R&B, but I also like some country and, you know, um, the, the list goes on and on, right? So the idea for this sort of comes out of, it was approximately five years ago now that I uploaded my first vinyl-related video here on my channel. Um, it was actually, it was five years ago, a couple of months back, but I, I don't count those first few months because I was just getting in the swing of it and uh, those videos weren't really the best. In fact, they were pretty much dog shit. So, um, not that these are any better or anything, but at least I've kind of gotten the hang of it now. So it's kind of a celebration of the five years. So I figured I would take five that uh, maybe I haven't shown before or don't show very often that are not blues related. And the other reason that uh, this sort of comes out of is a few conversations that I've had over the last couple of months with Steve Carlson, Uncle Steve, and uh, Vinyl Richie. Just me commenting on their videos about, oh, I like that artist, or I have that album. And then, you know, I get a little bit of a, a, res uh, a surprised response or reply to my comment. About, oh, I didn't, you know, hey, Blues Guy likes this act? That's, that's amazing, or whatever. So... I figured, you know, hey, why not show a little bit of something different here on the channel? So, without further ado, let's get into this thing here, shall we? Of course, sporting a Led Zeppelin shirt, and in the background, one of my favorite non-blues artists, little Johnny Cougar, or Mellencamp, John, John Mellencamp, John Cougar, John Cougar Mellencamp, anyway, excellent. Uh, but I'm going to uh, start it off here, and this is in no particular order or anything. Um, just sort of, again, five that I've pulled out of my collection that I'm like, oh, geez, you know, this, this would be interesting. So the first one here I'm going to show is a band that many of you, I'm sure, collect as well, because they're terrific. It's a band called Rare Earth. Really, really dig Rare Earth. Um, they are on the subsidiary of Motown label, the, the Rare Earth label. And, um, yeah, I just really dig them. You know, they're, uh, they're funky, they're soulful, but they're also rock and roll. Um, a lot of guitar, heavy guitar influence. Uh, but again, that sort of funky, soulful sound that makes Rare Earth a really, really excellent band. I really enjoy their music. They're, um, they've been very consistent, I find, with all of their albums. Nothing that was really, you know, a big pile of flaming garbage or anything like that. And I, the funny thing, too, is I don't see them a lot up here. So when I do, I really get excited. And I'm like, man, I got to jump on that. Got to jump on that album and scoop that up. Love the, uh, the artwork on a lot of their album covers as well. This one had the new uh, sleeve. And it's always a nice bonus. I uh, even have a live one here. Two, uh, two album live. This one I'm sure a lot of you have seen over the years. Made to look like sort of a knapsack or a book bag or whatever. And uh, the records pop out of the top. The only unfortunate thing about that is you know, they've shoved two records in there without it being a gatefold, but a lot of room. So, and uh, Cool insert with that as well. Oh, that's blank. That's exciting. Yeah, cool insert came with it as well. So yeah, Rare Earth. Really, really dig those cats. Don't see them very often, but when I do, I've got to jump on it because I like their their perfect blend of uh, sort of rock and roll oriented guitars uh, with the soulful rhythm and blues sort of funky stylings of you know just the entire band as a whole. 
This next artist is a weirdo, a damned weirdo, but I dig this cat. Uh, sort of, sort of a man of mystery ish. I, I think he's cre he, I think he created this sort of a persona for himself, this sort of mysterious persona for himself. Um, supposedly born in Cyprus, I believe, and then his family moved to Canada, and he kind of got involved in the local folk scene here in Canada, and then eventually. Um, I got to know a few American folk artists and then started appearing in a lot of um, folk music festivals and other festivals uh, in the U.S. and eventually made his way down there. And, you know, uh, he got discovered, I think, performing actually with Bob Dylan and a bunch of other folkies. Anyways, I'm talking about Leon Redbone. Now, uh, my first introduction to Leon Redbone was, I believe it was either Muppet Show or Sesame Street that I saw this cat on there. And I know he's appeared on a lot of late night talk shows as well. I think he was on Carson, Letterman, maybe some other, maybe Dick Cavett or something, or I don't know. But yeah, Leon Redbone, kind of blues-ish, but more what I would categorize as old time music. He does a lot of the stuff from the, he covers a lot of songs from the 20s and the 30s, sort of pre-WW2 stuff, most especially. Um, he does some original stuff, uh, so it's a, I find that his most of his albums are a nice blend of the two. It's sort of a 50-50 of original stuff and covers. And he covers, you know, a lot of different artists. but And he's a multi-instrumentalist, too. He plays um, acoustic guitar, six-string, 12-string. He plays uh, steel guitar, mandolins, ukulele, all kinds of stuff. Yeah, yeah, I really, really dig Leon Redbone weirdo that he is. So this is... Um, uh, on the track, Leon Redbone. Got the double time here. These, I believe, are all on Warner, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, this one is uh, Champagne Charlie, Leon Redbone. He's got a great voice. Some people aren't a huge fan of his voice because it's kind of nasally. He's got that AMF behavior. Saving all my love for you, but I don't know. I just dig it. This is uh, uh, red to blue, Leon Redbone. Diamonds don't mean a thing. Love sick blue, so on, so forth. So yeah, dig this cat. He's strange, but he's cool. Uh, speaking of cats, I first got into these guys in the um, kind of in the early '80s, pretty much when they were just kind of coming onto the scene. Um, Really like rockabilly music, uh, psychobilly, rockabilly music. Um, and uh, these guys sort of redefined rockabilly as a sort of subgenre of the punk rock scene. And I just really dug their sound, always have. And I'm a big Brian Setzer fan in terms of his uh, solo stuff. Excellent guitarist, does some really cool sort of, again, um, rockabilly inspired. Um, Music, he's, he's done some big band projects as well. Speaking of none other than Stray Cats. This is a rant and rave with Stray Cats, with the uh, original inner sleeve in it as well. Uh, this is an original pressing, a Canadian pressing. It's on EMI. Nice uh, custom center label there. Yeah, just a really cool sound, very stripped down, but very, very talented. Um, unfortunately, have never had the chance or the opportunity to see the Stray Cats as a band, you know, as the Stray Cats live, unfortunately. I've seen Brian Setzer uh, live, and I've seen Lee Rocker's um, band live, uh, but unfortunately did not get a chance to ever see the Stray Cats live. Which is fine. I mean, who knows? I may still get the chance. I mean, they're still touring and they're still putting out albums. I mean, this one was just put out a couple of years ago. Uh, 40th anniversary of the band, Stray Cats 40. I did an album review on this on my channel after it was uh, released and I picked it up. It's an excellent album. Really, really good. If you like the Stray Cats and their sort of rockabilly sound, a slightly blues influence, most especially with Brian Setzer's playing. But uh, yeah, really, really great. Really love the Stray Cats. Uh, excellent, excellent sort of poppy rockabilly band. 
Uh, next up is a Canadian band, and this would be, I guess you would, up here in Canada, we would classify them as classic Canadian rock. They're sort of an arena rock band or stadium style rock band. Uh, these guys are huge in Canada. Uh, they started in 69, and I think they went right up until 2021 when um, one of the founding members passed away. And I think after that, they've sort of called it quits. But uh, this is a band called April One. A fantastic Canadian rock band. Again, that arena rock sound. Miles Goodwin, very, very good lead vocalist. Uh, they've got some great guitars in here as well uh, with uh, Gary Moffat. Really, really like April Wine. Uh, Ooh, What a Night and uh, Could Have Been a Lady. Um, they've done some covers and then they've got a lot of original material as well. I got a lot of April Wine, so I'm going to have to blow through these pretty quickly here. One of my favorite, not only just one of my favorite band, Canadian bands, but just favorite band in general. Did a lot of, uh, like I said, arena rock type stuff, but some of those late 70s and getting into the early 80s sort of power pop ballads as well. So they're a bunch of sweethearts, eh? with the, the, the love songs and the ballads. Excellent, excellent band. If you're not familiar with April Wine, I would highly encourage you to check them out. Again, great vocals, great guitar, excellent songwriting as well. Catchy hooks. It's got that sort of rock and roll, bad boy sort of attitude amongst the band. And I, these guys I have seen in concert. They've opened for bigger American acts, and then they've also been the headliner in their own tours with smaller Canadian bands supporting them or opening up for them as well. Look at these outfits. Look at these jackasses. Oh yeah, you can't have an inner sleeve photo of a Canadian band without somebody guzzling some beers, eh? Gotta have a couple of beers there, eh? And the nice thing about April Wine as well is that um, here in Canada, you know, because they were such a great selling band, uh, he is one of my favorite hockey team's jersey there, the Montreal Canadiens, fantastic. But uh, they've, you know, they were such a huge band up here that uh, you can find their albums, at least here in Canada, quite easily. And you're not going to pay more than maybe eight to ten dollars Canadian for, you know, a near mint or almost mint copy of one of their albums. Because they're just, uh, this one came with the inner sleeve and the poster. Uh, again, just because they were so huge up here, you know. Uh, I even got a live, April Wine Live. This is not the show I was at, though, unfortunately. Uh, how cool would that be? But yeah, they've, these guys have like, I don't know, this is just a small sample. I mean, they, these guys have, I think, 20 studio albums, a whole schwack of live albums. You know, as mentioned, they went on for, you know, like 50-ish years. So a lot, a lot, a lot in their dis discography. Oh, uh, who's next here? Oh, this last, the last one, last one up. Um, love this band. I've uh, been listening to this band since about, I don't know, 1984, 1985. They're my favorite band of this genre, although I do like many other bands in this genre. I'm talking about punk rock here now. Um, love SNFU, love uh, DOA, um, uh, Sex Pistols, of course, uh, Black Flag, uh, some local bands here like Big House and the Motherfuckers, pardon my French, it's named the band, man, what are you going to do? Uh, but these guys are my favorite, and I think it all, be, it's all comes down to um, the lead vocalist, and I'm speaking of none other than the Dead Kennedys, head up by frontman Jello Biafra, and I think Jello Biafra is kind of that perfect mix of shitty, grungy, punk rock asshole and a beautiful wordsmith poet. You know what I'm saying? So this is a Dead Kennedy's uh, Give Me Convenience or Give Me Death. Uh, on here, uh, we've got uh, Too Drunk to Fuck. Um, what else is on here? A Holiday in Cambodia. 
uh, Saturday Night Holocaust, uh, Buzz Bomb from Pasadena. Now, these are reissues uh, because I originally had these in the 80s on cassette, which uh, I no longer have. Uh, Vinyl Richie, uh, he and I chatted briefly in the comments section about the Dead Kennedys because he had uploaded a video where he had picked up a couple of live Dead Kennedy albums. One not so great, the other one quite good. And he had recommended the ones that I would probably like the one that he also preferred. So uh, thanks for that, Rich. I'm going to be still keeping my eye out for that album. This is In God We Trust, Inc. Again, these are all reissues, Canadian reissues. Uh, what's on this one? Uh, hyperactive Child. Keepone Factory. Keepone is a chemical that when it goes up your nose, turns you spastic. But nobody told the people at the Keepone Factory that something might be wrong. Uh, Nazi Punks Fuck Off. Rawhide. Their cover of Rawhide is on here. And of course, the one that most people would be familiar with, Plastic Surgery Disasters with the Dead Kennedys. Again, Canadian reissue Canadian pressing uh, government flu is on here terminal preppy is on here uh, buzz bomb uh, Winnebago warrior brave as old John Wayne uh, dead end I mean, just just fantastic as uh, Richie himself would say fantastic but it is these guys are great again that sort of shitty snotty attitude mixed with um, equal parts, artistry, but also social concerns. Uh, concerns of not only what was going on in the United States or North America in general at that time, but just globally what was happening in the world, you know? So, yeah, great band. Um, it's got that, uh, again, that perfect mix of what you want with the attitude, but the message. You know, there's some great stuff there. And that, that's why... Uh, some of these, I mean, there's others. I could have shown easily 20 other artists from my collection that might surprise you because it's not blues related. But these are some of the, the, the highlights. See, these are some of the ones that I really admire these artists for their lyrics or their musicianship or both, or just their creativity and their uniqueness. So there you go. Five artists from my collection that might surprise you. So I hope you enjoyed that, and I hope everybody's doing well out there. Let me know what you think down below, and of course, do all the other things. Keep digging, keep spinning, and we'll see you on the next one. All right, everybody, take care. Cheers.